so this podcast is about you and your journey in music. Uh, we'll talk about um, Stage Moms and, and the new EP and how you uh, got to where you are now. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Very rad, my friend. Uh, so where were you? Where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born in uh, I was born in like Wheeling, West Virginia, but I was raised in uh, St. Clairsville, Ohio, which is like right across the river from it. So like I've pretty much lived my whole life in St. Clairsville, Ohio. Okay, so that's what south east southeast Ohio. Um, I don't even yeah. know. <laughs> it's, it's honestly just like east, like it's like um, so stage moms and all like all of us, we all live in the um, like the tri-state area of Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania. So it's like oh, right got it. Okay, West Virginia, like the very top of West Virginia. Okay, cool. Right on. Yes, yeah, I have family in in Cleveland, so I was trying to figure it out geologically or geographically uh, yeah. <laughs> where that would be. Yeah, Cleveland's about uh, like three hours, maybe like two and a half from us. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Right on, man. Well, so how did you get into music? Um, I, I, my, I, let's see. So I started my first band with some kids when I was like. 13 and then like obviously that broke up and didn't last and then we I started like a solo project in 2011 that was kind of like folk punk stuff and then it uh became like a full band and then that broke up in like 2017 2018 and then stage mom started in uh like late 2019 okay right on right on um what was the first instrument you learned uh drums oh drums right on. do you, you do you play drums in the band now no I, I just do vocals i um very recently like about a month or two ago just got back into drumming and then i picked it back up because it's been almost a decade since i've been in band oh. or been in drumming. Band drumming yeah okay how old were you when you first learned drums like 12 Oh, okay. Did you t play at l in the school marching band or? or no, I just like I just took lessons. Took lessons. What what drew yeah. you to drums? Um, I don't know. I just kind of liked it. Like I thought I thought I'd like it, and I ended up liking it. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> it was either drums or guitar, and I just like I wanted to do something, and, and uh, I was just like, I guess I'll try drums, and if I don't like it, I'll do guitar because like everyone plays guitar i so. was gonna say yeah the dr <laughs> drummer guitars are a dime a dozen when it comes to a drummer you have like a pick of the litter with any you can play with anybody right you get yeah something. that was that was kind of <laughs> like uh the mindset was like well everyone plays guitar so maybe i'll try drums and if i don't like it or i suck at it i'll move to fall move back to on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that band you played when in when you're 12 years old um or 12, 13, you said, were you the drummer of that band or had you already yeah. switched? Oh, you, you did. Yeah, okay. I was, uh, that was the band when I first sang or anything. So I drummed and then our, uh, our vocalist moved to, uh, Louisiana, I think. And, uh, we had, a we had this like, like a steak fry gig we were playing. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, we didn't have a vocalist. So I just tried. And then for the rest of that band, I, um, did drums and vocals and then i wow uh, so you're drumming and singing at the same time i was trying trying okay. <laughs> <laughs> how did that work out that must be difficult uh, man the bands that do that i'm always just so blown away <laughs> it was fun i mean it was so long ago i mean we were terrible but it was fun sure sure so once once you started singing is that when you uh after that band kind of broke up is that when you just decided you know what i should you know play guitar or you know to pursue just vocals or what was it what what did you play and what was the next uh step so you I, play? I like um i wanted to just like find bands or try to make it and i like find like make a band or whatever so and i couldn't for for years so i just like bought a ukulele and taught myself how to play ukulele and then um just started like a like a folkish pop like it started out as like never shall never style music okay but it, sure but then i bought a baritone ukulele and it went to like folk punkish stuff 
Very cool. Right on. And um, so w- was this still in high school? Like, were you like, how yeah. old were you? Is that, that's I not- started this uh, sophomore year in high school and then I ended it um, like 2018. Okay. Wow. So you did it for quite some time then. Yeah. Yeah. That was the definitely like the longest project I ever had. Did you tour at all or like, was yeah. it mainly locally? Oh, talk, talk to me about that. How was that? Yeah. I toured a lot with that. Um, I started touring like, or trying to tour right out of high school, like, um, like a month after graduation, I booked like a, a week long tour that was terrible. Cause you know how it is, but uh, sure. <laughs> was it just all DIY style? Um, yeah. co- like how did you were just emailing cold emailing venues? Absolutely. <laughs> and, um, I got to the point um, where I just like kept on going and going and I toured a lot with that band and our um, stage mom's guitarist. Uh, he he was in that band at the end for like the last year and a half. Um, uh, he played a uh, keyboard and then he switched to bass for the final stuff. But uh yeah, I toured, I toured a lot with that. Um, I think I did like 20 something tours with it. Wow. All, all East coast or did you do like, like- uh, we went, um, we went everywhere, but like the West coast. Okay. So you did, yeah. Middle America and, and, yeah, and, and, and then we East did, coast. Then we did some Canada dates too, but yeah. Wow. Okay. So that was really a thing. Were you guys signed to a label or anything? No, we were all 100% DIY. Wow. Wow. Okay. So that band ended up fizzling out. When when does Stage Mom start? Um, Stage Mom started last, no- or oh, I guess two Novembers, like November 2019. Oh, wow. So like right before the, yeah. the pandemic hit. Okay. So you... And- so talk to me about that a little bit. So you guys start this band. You said you had you took a member from from the other project. Did you have these? Did you have songs ready? Like how did how did that transformation happen? No. So um, when the last band down they fall when we uh when we broke up we broke up because of like my uh like mental health and stuff, and I was also opening a venue. So I um I wow. kind of like didn't really want to tour anymore or like really make music at all so i um we broke up in our our last like down they falls last show was uh thunderbirds which was the venue i owned's first show so for the like two years i like i did thunderbirds i wasn't in a band or anything i had a um I had a rap project called uh, Richard Monet, which I, I did, but I didn't really take it too seriously. I just like would play like some rap shows and stuff, but like I never toured with it or did anything. And then um, I think like two years ago um, now, like I'm trying to think of like the, cause the, the this pandemic, pandemic like- like screwed screw- up my time of course yeah. <laughs> like a whole year disappeared yeah so from two years ago so like what yeah um i started like getting back into making um like folk punk music like just for fun um i had a little project called vage goda um we only played like seven shows and uh we just did one tour with our friends apes of the state um Mm -hmm. like we didn't release any music or anything (laughs) like i just posted some some videos on facebook and stuff like it was super like super like diy super like i was kind of fed up with how like i don't know like how I, i don't know how to phrase it like i was like annoyed with how like streaming services or everything and like Mm -hmm. how you have to pay like a bunch of money and to record and then like get it up on everything so i was like i'm just gonna do this like we could have put them on Bandcamp, and like we planned on doing it but 
we just like I'd put some videos on like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and then that was kind of all we did and then that kind of got me back into like enjoying playing music again so Mm -hmm. I like um I ran into an old friend who drummed and um he was saying how he wished he had he wished he had a band and so I was like yeah let's like jam together sometimes so we got like the band together and we just kind of like jammed and the whole mentality was like yeah like maybe we'll play thunderbirds a couple times but like that's it and then it kind of just like kept on like snowballing and now here we are <laughs> wow okay wow so that so stage moms essentially started that way it was like we're gonna play maybe a few shows at thunderbirds and then now it's a, a yeah thing <laughs> you have a record out yeah yeah okay when so when did you if you if you started the band in november right before the pandemic talk to me about the album and how did that all come together so we um we formed in september of 2019 and um then we put our first dp out in uh november 2019 and then um we like toured off of that and then obviously the pandemic hit and um so we didn't go we or we didn't really get to write together or anything so we just like kept writing and like sending like phone voice memos and stuff to each other and just trying to figure it out and then once the like the lockdown lifted and stuff we uh i think in the like late summer like midsummer yeah Mm -hmm. like midsummer we uh we'd get together like once a week in practice at the practice space and just like wrote the EP. And then in September of 2020, we uh, went up to New Jersey to record with um, uh, the lumber yard up in uh, Hamilton, New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And then we just recorded that and then released it. <laughs> wow. Very cool. Very cool. So was it, is it strange? I mean, you, it sounds like you've lived uh, a life of, record tour record tour or like band and then you know you you've been on the road quite a bit like now we're in inside still i mean it's been over a year now and tours are maybe happening coming what october of this year um or november even i've seen uh was it weird putting the record out and with no real you know guarantee of being able to go out and support it oh yeah it was like literally my biggest fear (laughs) sure i mean and you said earlier like you music was kind of like you didn't want to be in a band because it was all based off streaming and and in online presence right is that what you're kind of talking about uh that was i mean not really but yeah kind of like that was kind of like that's not why we had a we had a traumatic incident with someone in uh that we took on tour who uh basically um it, it was like a whole thing but that <laughs> kind of like spiraled into um me not really like being able to trust anyone and uh so Got it. we like it kind of just like really messed with my mental health and then that's kind of why we um why the band eventually broke up because I like couldn't really trust anyone and like um didn't really want to be like just staying at random people's houses and stuff like that uh-huh. so um we uh we broke up and then like when I formed Vage Goda I was just like I don't really want to like do this whole like streaming stuff like I couldn't care less about it which is funny because now it's like almost like I get I kind of like get caught up in that like number race now like sure. we got to get to this just because like there's no touring and no like yeah so that's the only like it's like a validation like, i can find sure <laughs> it's it's like it's like gambling almost so to speak like you see the numbers and like the dopamine runs it's like oh i just got another thousand views or whatever like it's it's just crazy how um just the the state of of the industry is Oh yeah, absolutely. I agree with you a hundred percent. Like it is like gambling and I love gambling. So that's probably where <laughs> <I got. laughs> that's why you love watching your stream numbers go up. That's amazing. Yeah. Very that's cool. Funny. Well, with that, like, I mean, 
now that you can't tour, like how, what are, what is the angle like with promoting the record? Like, I mean, obviously we're doing an interview right now, but have you guys done like uh, live streams? Do you have any like uh, things like that you hope that you can tour and do in the next few months? Yeah, um, so we actually can't do live streams. Um, our uh, bass player just moved to Florida a few months ago. Oh, wow. Then, um, okay. I have like a situation like I um I lost my grandpa to COVID. Uh, oh my like, gosh, I'm so ago. sorry. And so I've been like staying at my grandma's house and like so I don't really go anywhere because I don't want to bring like, it home. Obviously, yeah. Oh my she got her gosh, man, I am myself. so sorry. Like that is that is awful. Yeah, it's been it's been pretty shitty, but hopefully now with like everyone getting their vaccines and like i get my vaccine monday tuesday so oh, like, awesome hopefully like uh, i'm starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel but like at the same time i'm not because of like that spring break stuff and like i like you can just see the cases go up again mm -hmm. and then like summer no one's gonna take it seriously well i mean the people <laughs> who you know how it is like right the right of course will, i'm not sure where you, where you're from but in our I'm from California and we were in like lockdown, lockdown forever. I actually just moved to Nashville, which is a completely different world uh, uh, when, it come, when it comes to yeah. masks and, 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 you know, gatherings and stuff. It's like pretty much, oh, it's, it's more open where I'm at currently in the suburbs of Nashville, but um, in San Diego in Southern California, it was really tightly, you're tightly yeah. stuck inside. So well, I'm not sure what it is now but yeah it's basically like um i think we were like probably like a whole like eight months into the pandemic before we started like had to wear masks in every store oh every wow <laughs> like, like we'd always joke like because like we all like live in small towns i definitely do like I don't really even live in like a real town. Like I just say I live in St. Clairsville, but I live like 10 minutes outside of St. Clairsville. Sure. That's like um, where I'm at. I'm like outside of, of Nashville in the suburbs of Nashville. Yeah. I just like kind of live in the middle of nowhere. So it's like always been the <laughs> running joke with like my band and my family. Like, I don't know if like they know that COVID's happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get the newspaper in six months and be like, what is this pandemic? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Well, wow, man. That's so the, the records out at least, I mean, you guys were able to get the album out. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it was really good. Um, or I'm really glad. Sorry. I like cannot talk today for some reason, but, um, Dude, yeah, I, I'm really glad. Um, we recorded with, uh, Nick uh, Brasisi and uh, Ace Enders, and I'm so glad that we went with them because they are just the best. They they killed it, and I grew up like worshiping both of their bands, so it was kind of really cool to. Get which, to which, sorry, I don't, I don't I I don't know off the top of my head which which bands. Are uh, they um, so Nick is from Man Overboard, and Ace. Oh, is from, okay. Uh, the early November. Okay, I, I, know, I know both the band names. I just didn't know yeah. the, na the names of the members. Wow, so you were able to work with them. That's huge. Yeah. I mean, Man really Overboard's cool. massive band. I mean, so it was early November, but like, that's that's really mm -hmm. cool. Like, were you, how did that happen? Did you have to like pitch them on the songs or like, how um, does that work? I actually, um, we wanted to go there for our first EP, but we didn't have the budget. And like, we never, we never contacted them or anything, but, um, our, we have a lot of friends that like went there and stuff mm -hmm. and then uh they just like followed us on instagram one day and i hit them up and was like yo like we were about to hit you up anyway like what's your email and then like i just hit them up and it was just super easy like it worked um it worked super well they were like uh thunderbirds the venue i owned closed because of covid so like we had to reschedule because i like it was a whole mess because we were supposed sure. to record this in like early summer and they were super cool with like un being totally understandable and stuff. And they're just really great dudes. And like, there's a, 
a few other people like behind the scenes that work with that with uh, that studio and just like everyone was super nice and even the people where the um because it's on the second floor of an antique store mm-hmm. and like everyone in the antique store is super nice too so like oh, it's a really wow. good like environment it's on, this, it's on top of an antique store yeah it's like i can't imagine like being the antique stuff like them being all worried like okay are these kids gonna get (laughs) rowdy and this like you know clock from 1830 (laughs) is gonna fall over and break like did did they ever worry about that stuff that's hilarious i um it was actually like um so the second story of the antique store has like it like the antique store has two stories the antiques antique store has two stories there we go <laughs> <laughs> so the second story has like antiques and stuff and then you like go in a room and it's like the studios and the like whole other part so like got it okay like, yeah but yeah it was super cool that's awesome it's unfortunate that it, it, it wasn't able to sustain i mean hopefully do you have any like aspirations to like once people can tour again to try to get it off the ground oh oh wait i was talking about the studio was on the second story oh <laughs> got it sorry i thought you were talking about the venue that you had no no the oh. venue had was, uh, that was um it was just like a, a storefront and then you walked in and i took out the walls uh and so it was like uh i think it was like a technically it was a 200 cap space but like it was really just a 100 cap space like you okay. could yeah, it was really nice. I thought thing, you were but... saying, I thought you were saying your venue that you opened was in this antique store. I'm like, damn, like kids getting <laughs> rowdy. Like if you get these wild bands in there, like yeah, that's what when you said that, I was like, I don't really like think people were getting too crazy at a studio, but like, <laughs> I've been in school with a bunch of lames, so like I don't know how normal people go into a studio, sure. but we're all just like on our phones and like watching TV. <laughs> Got it. I see. I was. I I would thought you were. <laughs> oh good man that's rad well um dude thank you so much for talking with me i really appreciate it oh yeah yeah for sure this has definitely been a good conversation (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. um i have one more question for you uh do you have any advice for aspiring artists um basically just like just keep pushing um i know it's a lot easier to say say this than to actually do it but like literally just whenever like you decide what you want to do just put your blinders on and just just keep on going and don't take no for an answer Bring it back for you.